Yeah, there, and that is, you know, something that I do all the time. I'm a big do person, and I don't mean to do it, but they, I had uh, a teapot done one time, or it was a tippy toes, and that was one thing, using their their name, definitely. I get mad when my husband calls me a dude. I'm like, am I a dude? I'm like, let's not call you that. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and to, again, try to stay away from those good jobs and actually getting way more specific on what they're doing, especially the more younger they are, of course. Um, does anyone want to say anything about the, the double video? <laughs> it's weird. I'm telling you, when I first watched it, I thought it was broken. I was like, it's not quite weird. Um, so, teachers create short teaching episodes within ongoing classroom activities and routines. Teaching episodes focus on child's individual learning objective. So really kind of looking at that, when they went and made that puzzle for that, that little girl, she had to be so specific. First she had to teach the peer what was expected of her, and she had to make sure they played it out, made the materials, and make sure everything was there. And obviously she's not going to be using that for every single puzzle. She does. But for that episode, she had to be very specific on what they are going to need to do it, and it was very specific for that objective for that little girl. Um, if you guys have ever seen those puzzles, that have like, it's either like the butterfly net or the fishing pole with the magnet on the end and they can pick it up, the piece, and bring it over. Yeah, that's a great one to do that with holding piece, especially for child children that are working on that language piece. You can even put them in a bowl and they can fish it out and then they have to say the one that they want to say. Those puzzles work really good for that too. Um, this is an example of this little girl is asking a friend to play. So there's two parts to the video. The first part is these two teachers planning it out. It feels much more genuine than the chair pull-up video, uh, but they're actually intentionally talking about what they want to do in the block area because this child's been showing a lot of interest in the block area and they really want her to interact with peers more. So we'll show you both the videos and then we'll talk about it after, but there's two parts to it. Hey, Jordan, you want to so one of Leah's goals is to ask her friends to play, and she tends to only want to play by herself, so it's really important that we get her to tolerate playing with other kids and sharing her play ideas with them. And lately she's been really liking the block area, so I thought this week I'm going to give her some extra instruction and support in asking a friend to play with her when she's playing with the blocks already. Let me get for her to get some extra teaching with that goal. Sometimes as teachers and even mom, the mom, I get too hung up on that part. And it's like, no, our first initial thing is we wanted her to invite a friend to play. And at first she said no. But once that teacher said, do you want to ask this person or this person? Made it that choice, then she picked one. And she had another support in there. Did anyone else see it? Um, so the other support was that she had that one person desk and it was a solid surface where she could build on that desk. So that way she wasn't on the floor so that other kids couldn't knock it over. Um, maybe it was a rowdy class, it did seem kind of noisy, but she had that child specifically building those blocks right on top of that desk. Because that, when I first watched it, I'm like, well, that's not very inviting to ask someone to play with you if she's just sitting at a one-person desk. But it was maybe the next step for her because <coughs> it was just a one-person desk and kind of gave her that boundary space for her to be successful at playing blocks. That's what Everett needed was a one person. And that's the teacher give her block to, to do it so that it wasn't like taking away from exactly as well. Like yeah, was, I noticed that support is <laughs> maybe she would have gotten hung up on her yeah. making her give that block to her. So exactly. 
So purposely planning, a child should be able to answer these following questions like we said. And like Brooke has said, these are really, really important and um, it's just so powerful when you're able to you know, ask these questions to yourself and if the child can answer it, then you're doing the right job. So what do I need to do? How do I know I'm making progress? When, did, when do I know that I'm done? And what do I do next? Clear directions, that clear beginning, middle, <coughs> And that supportive environment. That teacher was right there with her to make sure that she was going to be successful in inviting that other friend to play. She was right there. She gave her clear directions. She knew that she was done when she had the high five, and she knew she was in the middle of it when she was given the block to her friend. And she knew it was the start because she had asked her, why don't you ask a friend to play? So being really, really clear about it. I know I went backwards, but um, making sure that we're giving those clear directions. Otherwise, they're not going to get that an intentional learning that we're trying to give them. They're not going to understand that skill. So, um, embedded learning learning opportunities as a, at a glance. It's in their it's handout. You're going to be using 12.4, A, B, and C, and I'll show you what they look like. It's that embedded learning opportunities at a glance. The tips for teachers and the teachers guide. So you're going to be using those ones. So what we're going to do is, and again, you guys can do this for a child that you currently have in your practice, or you can do it um, for your vignette kiddo. I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me explain it under here. Sorry, this one's long if I get up here. And does it stop at the data sheet? Yes. Okay. Yep, exactly. And does it start with this? You got it. Okay. You got it. So what we're going to do is, is you guys can take a moment, look at those handouts, and then after that you're going to use your vignettes or, like I said, a child in your practice that you want to use. Um, so you are going to, um, you're going to, sorry, you're going to map out an ELO using that activity matrix that you've already used and the goals that you set up for your child in your vignette. Or like I said, if you wanted to use somebody else, that's fine too. So you guys can take a look at it and fill it out and um, go from there. Does anyone have any questions? Embedded learning opportunities. Embedded learning opportunities. Does anyone have any more questions? Yeah, you could do your vignette kiddo where you made the goals and you're going to use the activity matrix too that you did earlier. So you're going to use that, your goals that you used, um, and as well as the three the three pieces of paper. Um, and there are some really good examples. Penny, can I borrow yours real quick? My dad's thrown down there. So, <coughs> so um, it's going to be really specific. So what are you going to do? What are you going to say? How will you respond? What materials do you need to do it? And how many, opportuni to, how many opportunities will you provide in the day? And then if you kind of look at this, this tips for teachers, it kind of gives you some nice ideas on different things that you can do. And then... This one kind of gives you like a little guide too. So definitely read over these handouts and then you can go ahead and do your ELO at a glance. Does anyone have any questions? All right. So I'm going to give you, because these kind of take a little while, so I'm going to maybe give you like 10 minutes and if you guys need more time.